this isn't, you have to remember, it's not just about the farmer's market. These are transient vendors. These are other people. This is not all about the, the, uh, the farmer's market. And I think that's where everybody loses sight. that the city is penalizing the farmer's market, that we're always picking on the farmer's market, when in fact the city has been nothing but supportive of the farmer's market. And, and this, the farmer's market really has received preferential treatment from the city since its inception. And the reason I say that is because I took a look at the history of the farmer's market. Uh, much of which was in the documents requested by Mr. Waller in his recent public records request. And I don't think Mr. Waller's here tonight, but uh, thank you, Mr. Waller, for bringing these issues to light because I never knew about them. Uh, I'm going to read a string of pertinent emails to you. First one is uh, September 2nd. I'm going to try to go through these fairly quickly, but. There are a couple ones here that are very pertinent. Uh, first one is September 2nd, 2010. Uh, it is from Donna Bednar to Michelle Nolan, who was at the time a uh, management uh, analyst in the city of Loveland. Michelle, here's an update for you. I'm beginning to work on the Articles of Incorporation application, followed by the 501c3 application. When I spoke to the organizer of the Madeira Farmers Market, he said he farmed an LLC because it is easier. I talked to my boss, who is an attorney specializing in contracts, and he said LLCs are more for-profit companies. He advised me to pursue the 501c3. The IRS requires that the organization incorporate first through their state, so that is the plan. The state application is $125 and the IRS application is $200. Is this money that Tom, who was the city manager at the time, is this money that Tom will advance us? If not, I will find it myself and pay myself back later. The other expenditures I see for yard signs, storefront posters, and possibly design fees, although I'm hoping Missy can create our logo since she has artistic talent. Not only does Madeira sell space to the vendors, farmers, they also sell sponsorships to local businesses for $200. I know we can get our local businesses to kick in. I do not need an answer today, but I will be sending the article's application out next week. September 22nd, 2010, for 11 p.m. To Tom Carroll from Michelle Nolan. Can we oblige Mrs. Bednar's request below? $325 for 501c3 application. Let me know the procedures. Thursday, September 2nd, 2010, 4.41 p.m. To Michelle and Gary Bidmar, who I believe was the assistant city manager at the time, from Tom Carroll, we can advance it if Gary concurs. Gary, it comes from your economic development line item, your call. Friday, September 3rd, 2010, 1.48 p.m. To Michelle Nolan from Gary Bidmar. I love the idea, let it fly. We can negotiate the loan interest rate later. September 3rd, 2010, 2 p.m. To Gary and Michelle from Tom Carroll, or from Donna Bednar, sorry. I pay interest in apple pies, thank you very much. How do I go about requesting $125 to the state of Ohio for the application for articles of incorporation? It'll be ready for mailing next Thursday. September 3rd, 2010. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. Um, okay. I will request the $120 check for one, two, three, column eight, three. Okay, I'll get to the crux of it here. Let me get to the crux. There's a whole lot of back and forth here about apple pies as interest. Uh, so I won't bore you with that. All right, so this is the crux. Bear with me. There's two of them here. 
to Tom Carroll from Harris Hager Finance Director. Gary just brought in a request for $320 from Donna Bednar for a loan to pay the application fees for a 501c3 for a farmer's market. Are we opening a can of worms with this? Will the city make loans to other groups wanting to file for 501 status? I am not sure if this falls into a proper public purpose of governmental monies. Mrs. Bednar states that she would be willing to front the money herself for the applications in her email to Michelle. I don't think this is an area we should be getting into. If you think this is okay, I will cut the check. But I don't want to open the uh, city up for ex examination and a possible black eye over $325. To Harry from Tom Carroll, I agree on the notion of no black eyes for the city. Thanks for looking out for this and other matters. I don't necessarily see this as problematic. Uh, if you see this differently, talk to me some more, he says. Okay, so so this is the email, Tom Carroll. Um, this is to Tom Carroll from Finance Director, Harry Steger, September 22nd. I have just a couple other talking points I would like to bring up. Number one, I have a dilemma with this from an ethics standpoint. Donna is the wife of a council member asking for money from the city. I don't want this to have any appearance of impropriety, doing favors because of who she is married to. This would be a whole lot more palatable for me if someone else were asking for the loan. Number two, if we do this for Donna, and I think it's a worthy venture, are we getting set up to do this in the future for other groups that some could have issues about the city being associated with? I'm thinking, what if a pro-anti-abortion group asked the city, an Aryan Nation group, I'm reading what was written, I didn't write this. A group like the ones from Michigan putting us, um, putting up stop school every eight billboard. Once we begin this by starting something that looks harmless on the surface, are we getting ourselves up to be crucified by our residents in the future for not having foresight? Is Donna's venture going to make money for someone? How would the city be repaid if we could loan them the money? If she is soliciting businesses to advertise, is this where it would be paid from? Just my thoughts. I'm willing to cut the check for her. Just wanting to make sure we're going into this with our eyes as open as possible mm -hmm. for future unanticipated outcomes. And then there's some more emails, basically, where the check was, was done. Um, so. In spite of these valid concerns expressed by the finance director, uh, the city manager at the time authorized the payment to Mrs. Bednar. And then the council uh, also passed several ordinances carving out special exempt exemptions for them. Um, ordinance 2011-9-9, which eliminated the need for farmers to individually obtain a permit. Ordinance 2011-10, agreement for the lease of public parking lot for a dollar. The lease was awarded without competitive bidding by other leases because, and I quote from the ordinance, the lease would not be in the best interest of the city of Lowell. Ordinance 201136, which created a new definition for farmer's market and allowed special locations. Um, the point of all this is the farmer's market received money from the city to start their business, got a parking lot to set it up for a dollar, and free use of city services. And in addition, the vendors paid nothing. So I think if you read all this, there's been preferential treatment for the farmer's market. So to complain about um, having to pay a $50 fee for a vendor uh, for a year working in the city, doing business in the city, just seems uh, absurd that we're down to a dollar ninety two each time they come. I don't think that's unreasonable. And and those of you who who poo poo the background check, I don't know why a background check. It's not like you go in here with your information and you fill out some forms. It's not that big of a deal. I mean. Uh, I worked for the government for 32 years, and you don't want to go through the background checks I had to go through to get my security clearance because I had top-level security clearance. So it's nothing like that. It's just filling out a form. And 
And I would say, I would rather err on the side of safety than have something happen, happen to any resident or child because we didn't do our due diligence when people come in. Here. And I'm telling you, this isn't, you have to remember, it's not just about the farmer's market. These are transient vendors. These are other people. This is not all about the, the, uh, the farmer's market. And I think that's where everybody loses sight of why we're doing this. So anyway, um, I, wanted to just, I wanted to just go through and tell you the history and see how this farmer's market has had preferential treatment for all these years. And they continue to get preferential treatment.